it's just impossible to not worry. Impossible to not have anxiety. It's not going to be long before they realize where we're at. They're here. United States, present day. Virtually everything we do in our daily lives leaves a digital trail. For law enforcement, these everyday routines can help them stay one step ahead of the criminals. Now, 18 ordinary U.S. citizens are going on the run as fugitives. We got it. Don't move. I get to find out if I've got what it takes to escape the best hunters in the world. We're all around you. You might as well just pull over. And if they can evade capture for 28 days... Get down, get over here. ...they will win $250,000. Tracking them down are 32 of the top investigators in the world. It worked. New password. We can now log in. Where will they hide? Who will they trust? I want these folks caught. Move in. Stop! Your time on the run is over. Got it. Boom! 28 days, 18 fugitives. If you had to disappear, Don't move. could you? We got him. Across 100,000 square miles of the Southeast, nine teams of Americans have agreed to go on the run. Three teams have been captured. Now, six teams remain. After fleeing Atlanta with their accomplice Meadow on day one, Best friends Arif Mirza and Ahmad Ahmed have evaded the hunters by utilizing Meadow's contacts. Diane Alam. Let's get out of Atlanta now. Jason Port. All right, so we're on our way to Jill's place right now. Hey. Hey. And Jill Brown. Jill, right? All righty. While in command center, the cyber team has retrieved deleted text messages, revealing the names of their accomplices. We got everybody they contacted to prepare for this whole thing. Meadow was going to assist them. We got her number. But they were shaken when their host, Jill, relayed a disturbing message from Meadow. They need to move on to the next location. She thinks she's been followed. The hunt continues now. With regard to the RF and Ahmad investigation, we know Meadow in particular at this point is absolutely significant. So she knows who they're probably being in contact with. And that's what I want to know, because once I know that, I can then get ahead and get them to come to me rather than be on the back foot. I want to be on the front foot, and Meadow can help me do that. Here's our two fugitives. Here's Ahmad. Here's Arif. Here's Meadow. Here's all of Meadow's associates that have been involved. And Meadow's been using this network to move them. When you're facing mountains of data, link analysis is an integral tool. It's taking all the things you've gathered up until a certain point in an investigation. You can draw pictures that tell you these phone numbers talk to these phone numbers or these people talk to these people. Those patterns can help you figure out the clues that you need to track down the fugitive. The answer is in there somewhere. It is. More importantly. She Meadow was just... literally our first car out of Atlanta. So, so we sh I mean, it's true. We should have known that it was bound to happen. So we got to figure out where to go now. We probably shouldn't be standing out Are here, too. Know? Let's go stand on the other side of the house. It's a really big risk, but we're going to get a hold of Meadow uh, and see if she can maybe help us out. Hey, Meadow. Hey, Arnett. So there's a place a couple miles down the road that's not on my contact list. Linda. Linda, do you know Linda? Yeah, yeah. Just don't want you to get caught at Jill's, that's all. I don't think we can risk it anymore. We, we just gotta get out. Get away from these connections that are so close to Meadow still. If they're still following Meadow, you know, they're eventually gonna be able to track it. I mean, it's just a matter of time. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, be safe. Meadow. All right, good luck, you guys. 9388, that's Meadow. Okay, so that contacts the phone that's associated with Diane Nalam. Sure. Right? We then have Diane Nalam contact with a 1252 number, the one that we believe is associated with Jason, Jason G. Port, right? Gotcha. Diane Nalam has obviously rang Jason Port. Hey, Jason, can we come and get dropped off? Can you help the guys on the next bit of the, their journey? Right. Jason Port takes them to the north side of Cornelia. Right and then travel southeast out of the zone area. That last uh, cell hit we got belonging to Jason Port is where Jill Brown lives from Meadows Contacts. I mean, that potentially could be drop-off location for Arif and Ahmad. Let's get golf up, give them that information, and have them start heading that direction. Got it. Uh -oh, white trucks, white trucks, hate white trucks. You know, I just want to get out of here today, get somewhere safe, figure out the next couple of days where we're going to go, what we're going to do, um, no matter where that is. 
Call the, call the house, she's not home yet. Okay. Until I can get a hold of her and mm -hmm. confirm that they're home, Yep. you need to stay. Okay. Hidden. There is an individual we identified, Jill Brown. The location is just a couple of farm buildings in a, in a rural location. All right, yeah, that's boss. good. M4. On the outskirts of Atlanta, Georgia, two new fugitives begin their escape. Miles and Will, you're on the run. Yeah, right, let's go. Miles Swoboda and Will Muzika go on the run with a one-hour head start on the hunters. I went to the University of Georgia. We went to school at Furman. We went back and forth, hanging out with each other, lived the college life together. We like to have a good time. We like to have fun. And a big part of our strategy is meeting people and building a network as we go. Hide amongst our peers. People our own age to take us in and give us shelter, food. Our strengths are being able to talk to people our own age. If that's a girl, it's a girl. How are they ever going to catch on to a, a network of people that yeah. they know nothing about? This is the ultimate thrill, being on the run, having someone chase you, and if you make it to the end, you know, you're the man. Yeah, let's go. We are southern gentlemen, yes ma'am, mama's yeah, boys. Yeah, babe, uh, going on the run. Just want to tell you I love you. Got a toothbrush? Yeah, got my toothbrush. I got to go, mom. Love you. So are we going after girls tonight? I think that's the play. That was my hair. We want to go to a different place every night. We don't want to let the hunters ever get a beat on what, what we're doing, any kind of pattern we've got. Is the interstate that way? Can I get your number? <laughs> if we can run a chick like that every time, we'd be all right, though. OK, team, heads up. We have two citizens who are now considered fugitives. First, Miles Swoboda. Second, Will Muzika. Last known location, Atlanta, Georgia. All right, people, let's make it happen. Yes, sir. All right, you got it. Charles, I'd like to ask you to take the lead on Miles and Will. Roger that, ma'am. Cyber intelligence expert Charles DeBarber delves into Miles and Will's online presence to start piecing together their pattern of life. Like on his Twitter. He only graduated from University of Georgia a couple years ago. So looks like a handsome guy. Yeah. Oh, he's got some girls in his life. Because they like to go out, because they like to socialize, this time of year, they would go to the beach where there's fun, there's a lot of young people. They could hide in plain sight. And Will's from South Carolina. We just have to narrow it down between Charleston and Myrtle Beach. OK. I mean, we're about to get stuck in the rain. So if we don't make some moves real quick. Hey, can we ask you a quick question? We're hoping you can help us out a little bit. Like, are you from Charleston? Well, I go to school here. Oh, you nice. go to school here? Is What's your name? Christina. Christina Miles. Miles Johnson. Well, no worries, no worries. We don't mean to hold you up. No, we're just trying to get out of Charleston. It's raining. Like, we need to we change no locations. Would you give us a ride somewhere? Yeah. You will? You would. I was approached by these boys. <laughs> They're very nice looking boys. They need a place to stay tonight. I know, but you just have to trust me, I guess. These guys are prolific social media users. How can we use that to exploit them? We might be able to log onto his Tinder because it's logged in through Facebook. Yep, we're in. We can actually make a 50 mile Tinder radius and have a straight up swipe of have you seen me reward. We could literally blanket the entire coast and it's so used by 25 year olds in their age bracket that in a college town, oh, everyone would know in a short amount of time. That's brilliant. That's the kind of thing where like, like women will see that and they'll start talking about it offline. Those we are hunting, they're dependent on technology. So using these technologies and using them in a subversive way to try to get any type of intelligence and information about our fugitives, it's completely paramount. Meg? Hi. Hey, Meg. Hey, Meg. Hi, Meg. How are you? This um, is Miles and this is Will. Hi. Yeah. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Can we come in? <laughs> We're actually planning to camp tonight. Yeah, but the storm, the like, storm kind of totally threw our plans. I mean, we could even sleep on. We could even we'll sleep, sleep on the porch. On your porch. We just don't want to sleep in the rain. We're getting the help of others and strangers outside of our friends and family. It's just hard for me to think that they can really trace that. 
We have an op that we're cooking up called Operation Cupid's Revenge. We're gonna bathe every dating app with wanted poster of Will and Miles. It's going to say reward and swipe right if you have anything to report. I'm gonna make it really hard for them to get around. So I'm turning computers into what are called slave boxes. Each slave box connects with all compatible females in a 200-mile range of the targeted areas, delivering thousands of wanted posters per hour. I have two accounts going at all times. One is going to stay in the Charleston and Myrtle Beach area in the coast. The other one's going to move closer to Athens, Georgia, in the big college towns. I'm going to make it impossible for them to move around without being noticed. I think they're looking for women that'll take them in in the evening and let them chill out and party. Somebody's going to give them up for money if they bump into them. It'll only be a matter of time before it bites them right in the backside. Now the command center has cracked RF's network, leading them to Jill Brown. Hunter Team Golf heads to the suspected drop-off point. Well, if they're home, they're going to come out now, so here she comes. <laughs> No, we were trying to see if anybody was out in the field working. We just wanted to try to talk to uh, Jill Brown. How All you right. doing? I'm John. This is Vinny. How you doing, Jill? We're here to speak to you about your friend Meadow. OK. She asked you to help out with any specific people. Did you have anybody staying here that she requested you? I never had anybody you? staying here that I didn't invite. Well, let me show you these pictures. Meadow didn't ask you, hey, can you hook me up with these guys? <laughs> OK. You almost, you almost told us. <laughs> you have a camera out here? Oh, no. OK. What if you called Meadow and say, hey, where are they? <laughs> and help you guys? Yeah, why not? <laughs> I would help you. If you had a flat on the side of the road, I'd help you. I know Meadow. I don't know you. Sorry. No. Right. <laughs> you know, you'll find in the country, the country people help each other, but strangers. Yeah. All right. We just interviewed Jill Brown. How did you feel about it? They were there. Fantastic. OK. You think she's going to pick that phone up, make a call now, or what? I think so. I think she's going to call Meadow, definitely. So we're taking a look at Jill's phone. We'll let you know if we intercept anything on Jill's behalf. All you right. got it. Roger that. Meanwhile, RF and Ahmad have already traveled to a new safe house just outside of Meadow's network. Hey, guys. Hi. How are you? Not too bad. We were just coming hey. up to see you. Um, I didn't know if there was any soap down here. <laughs> and I didn't know if there was any toothpaste down Oh, my here. god. Sorry. But he just got really excited. <laughs> Do you know this is something I've been like looking for for like well, here's some bad 10 soap days? <laughs> well, finding out about Meadow being tracked, it just really messes with your mind. Can't get too comfortable here, either, um, because we have to keep moving. We just have to play smart. Have you got a plan for tomorrow at all yet? We have like a we have an idea that we'd get up to Lake Hartwell. We have a giant camper, and we have a kayak. We can take our camper over. Y'all can paddle and kayak. That is that's a good plan. Bob. That's a solid plan. Linda and Bobby are gonna give us their camper and their kayak. So our plan is to do a night on the camper then a, a night on the lake. Now we have a plan, and I can't wait. You guys are amazing. <laughs> like, just George are you? Redneck. <laughs> you guys are doing so much, and you're willing to do so much. Yeah. <laughs> just east of Woodstock, Georgia, a new set of fugitives, two Tran and Centra Tran, go on the run. Oh you're now on the run. Given a one-hour head start on the hunters. Come on, girl. I think when people see us, they think, oh, cute little girls, they're a little frilly, frou-frou, like they need some help, but really we're just going to come with a bigger bark. I am writing down numbers down because I don't think it would be really smart to bring my phone with me considering there's a GPS tracker. So the plan is to grab a burner phone and reach out to these people. I'm a gamer. I like to play Call of Duty and slay bitches all day long. I can always anticipate the next move, assess a certain scenario, and dissect it. I think we'll always be one step ahead of the game. Hat for stars. I am going on the run with Two Tran. She has been one of my best friends since we were five years old. Not to mention, she has the same last name as me. She's kind of the yin to my yang. I am bringing my camera. Barter? 
being a wedding photographer, I'm always creative. So given any situation, if there's a problem, I can always figure out a way to solve it. We camp a lot, so I'm just gonna bring here. I'm used to being um, in the wilderness and having to be resourceful. We're gonna try to stay off the grid, just kind of rough it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, team, heads up. We have two more citizens who are now considered fugitives. Two Tran. Centra Tran. Last known location, Woodstock, Georgia. Tran is a very common Vietnamese name, and so chances are these are individuals who will have links with the Vietnamese community in Woodstock and surrounding environs. At this point, we don't know if they're related or not. Right. So right. let's not assume anything. All right, let's make it happen. We'll get right on it. In Woodstock, Georgia, the fugitives make their escape with Tu's fiance, Alec. So what's the plan right now, guys? Are we about to hit the ATM or are we grabbing some cards, prepaid cards? I mean, it looks like we're on the way to the ATM, so let's go ahead and do that. Then the Walgreens and grab the phone and then we'll go back on the highway. The first thing we're gonna do is get cash and get as many supplies as quickly as we can and get some burner phones as well. And then from there, just get off the grid. Thank you. Ooh, let's go. So I'm gonna try to get this going so we have a burner phone immediately. Yes. An ATM withdrawal was made by Sandra Tran. Ooh. She withdrew $100 about an hour ago. The address is 6725 Highway 92, Woodstock, Georgia. I'm going to send this over to Ops. So they probably get to go. They leave their location. They go right to pull money out. Get me a good vehicle for them, and we can deploy our units appropriately. I've also asked for any authorized dealers of burner phones within a five mile radius of their jump location. As soon as a fugitive goes on the run, I want to know right away who within a certain mile radius of where the fugitive's last known location was is selling prepaid and burner phones. So hopefully we'll have something fall out of that. We can get a bunch of numbers that we can start examining and hopefully narrow it down to match it up with the fugitive's location. I'm thinking I've got this activated. Woo! I think we've got a good start. Escape room business owner Lee Wilson and his friend Hilmar Skagfield have evaded capture for 12 days by using a secret communication system to avoid detection. Everyone is following the instructions to a T. But Command Center has infiltrated their network. But another letter from the same return address. It's to Lee Wilson's wife. They got everybody. All those contacts have been burned now. Now, following up on the addresses obtained from the mail cover, Law enforcement veterans Buck Smith and Griff Garrison get an unexpected lead. I, I got a voicemail and I don't understand. I think somebody butt dialed me and I wonder if somebody just made a mistake. Yeah, Wilson. Hmm. Oh, she tried snap. Calling you? Yes, hold on. Yeah, let's see what she says. She leave you a voicemail or what? Yeah, I think it was a butt dial. And she's talking in the background the whole time. Beth Wilson, Lee Wilson's wife. <laughs> that to, uh, I'm gonna call uh, Rafa. Hey, buddy. Hey, uh, looks like Beth Wilson butt dialed me. Did you hear anything? Can't make it out, but y'all should be able to enhance it. Look here. What up, people? It's the shed and the fan. Be ready to slash the tires. What? Slash the tires? Chad and the van should be ready to slash the tires. Just trying to think outside of the box. You should like call him Beth Wilson. And trying to exploit the butt dial and saying something along the lines, I got a call from you and a voicemail. Sounds like you butt dialed me. Just thinking maybe it'll make her freak out and reach out to them or someone who has contact with them. It's worth a shot. Worth a shot. All right, here we go. Hello? Miss Beth. Yeah. This is Griff Garrison. Um, I got a phone call from you. Did you mean to call me? Aki, date stamp this call right now. Uh, I don't no, it, it's okay. In fact, I'm, I'm I'm very flattered and pleased that you did. Well, what did I say? Well, it was a butt dial. Do you need to look at your phone real quick at the uh, the time you called me? What about flashing tires? What does that mean to you? Good job. There you go. Now flashing tires? Yeah. Now she's scratching her head. <laughs> you tell me. Is your heart starting to beat a little bit faster right now? Blood pressure's pumping a little bit harder? Uh...
Engaged in a game of cat and mouse with Hilmar and Lee, Hunter Griff Garrison questions Lee's wife, Beth, after she accidentally left a message on his phone. Is your heart starting to beat a little bit faster right now? Your blood pressure's pumping a little bit harder? I really don't know what you heard. You gotta love those butt dolls. I want you to know, when we go pick up uh, Mr. Lee Wilson, your husband, in Skagfield, I promise to you that I'm not gonna tell them that your phone call led to their capture. I just want you to know that. Take care. Bye. That worked yep. out great. You, you had it right where you wanted it, Griff. Good job. We need to make sure we're on everything with her digital because she is right now making oh, yeah. a phone call or someone. We're all over these phones. We'll see if they fire up. We'll see who she's calling or texting. Solid work, man. In Savannah, Georgia, Hilmar and Lee are on a mission to find out how the hunters infiltrated their network. There's something wrong because the hunters have way too much information on us right now. If the mail system's tapped, how did they find out about the mail system? Beth has a full-bodied understanding of what's going on. Beth has a burner phone that's completely clean, so talking with her in a safe way is going to help us. All right, let's get to the bottom of things. Hey, Beth, it's Omar and Lee. Hey, baby. So we just wanted to like talk with you about how all the information's flowing to you. OK, where to start? Um, I dialed the hunter. OK, so he called me and said, did you mean to leave me a voicemail? They said, flashing tires, does it sound familiar to you? And I just paused, and he said, is your blood pressure starting to rise? We have exposed our communication system. This is a dangerous position to be in. It's just deeply unsettling. Like, it's just deeply unsettling. How is it going to affect our plan? They are trying to smoke us out. They're trying to fluster us. They're trying to get you and us to make mistakes. I don't think that they are dumb enough to think that you're actually going to spill the beans and tell them. But I do think that they think that you will make an error in your communications. Yes. You are the only one that has this number, so I'm not making or receiving any calls here. Like, don't even call us on this phone. OK, go. I love you, baby. Best friends, Tu and Centra, have spent days traveling in a borrowed car and staying on the move in rural South Carolina. Do we need anything? My camera? This is the morning of day five. I'm really excited that we made it five days. We slept in the car again, second night in a row. This time we slept on a graveyard, kind of, sort of, in a church parking lot. Um, we're hoping to reach out to some of Two's contacts, because I think we need to switch it up a little bit. Hey, what's up? Hey, Rob. We are on the run right now. We are, like, over eating ramen noodle at this point. So, like, I don't know, is there, like, a place or something? Here? I mean, yeah, I mean, that would be awesome. Are you cool with going to Florida? <laughs> sure. I'm going to pick you up and a place to stay that's completely off the grid. Oh my god, thank you. Where should I meet you? In Jacksonville. Um, coffee in Riverside. It's right off the interstate. Oh my god, thank you so much. Bye. We're here. So what we can do is just like make take this road back. Alternate 17 and then hit up with 95. Let's go get money. What I'm concerned about is that when we step outside the vehicle, it's gonna be a face to the license plate. You know, we'll be seen at the gas station getting gas, we'll be seen at the bank getting money, and then we'll just get the hell out of South Carolina altogether. I mean, we could even do it like a BP. Should we just go there? Yeah. Okay, this is gonna be tricky. Okay. There's cameras everywhere. ATM surveillance footage of two tran from an ATM. Yeah. Is that that so would be two tran. Where yeah. is this? BP gas station, 348 College Park Road, Lots in South Carolina. Yeah. It's right here. Outside coverage. Pulling it. There she is. That's the same shirt. Okay, so that's her. That's her. They don't have front plates in that state, do they? 
No. Is that an exterior? No, it's a Nissan exterior. I think we have a vehicle for the trans. You got a plate or no? No. They pulled in forward and then backed out. Yeah, of course, to not get seen by this camera up front. The two in Centra, they backed their vehicle up so we couldn't identify the license plate. Um, so it's quite a clever move. And this is how this is how you have to think as a fugitive. You have to be smarter than the technical data that's out there. Relying on their strategy of finding strangers to help. What was your name? Katie. Katie, I'm Miles. Good to meet you. Miles. Miles and Will have managed to evade the hunters, moving south along the coast. Do you know we can get one of y'all's like, phone numbers or something? Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you for the popcorn and beer. We heard this bar right here. It's pretty good. On day 15, they arrive in Edisto Beach, South Carolina. Should we go talk to those two girls? New day. Um, we need to keep moving, find new people, new shelter, food, and uh, there's a lot of stress that comes with that. You're from Edisto? My girlfriend lives here, so. Oh, okay. no way. What was your name? It's Liz. Liz, Liz. Yeah. OK. And I'm Miles Will. Will. I mean, this is going to be a bizarre request. <laughs> Do you think that your girlfriend would let us like crash at her place yeah, for like, like a back night? porch or uh, like somewhere Outside? we put our hammocks under the house or something? Um, I'll call her. There's some guys here that need to talk to you. OK, I'm giving them the phone. Hey. Hey. Liz said that possibly we could maybe sleep outside, like on your porch, and then we'd be out tomorrow. Yeah, that's fine. You're the best. Awesome. OK, perfect. I can carry that chair for you. Yeah, thank you. No problem. This is her house? Oh, perfect. Oh, nice. Annie, Will. Annie, as Anna. Oh, Annie. Anna. Annie. OK, Will. Today's our 15th day. We started in Atlanta. We started in Atlanta, and we've spent zero dollars. And we made it and in Charleston. Made it. We're trying to just go. We have no ties whatsoever. Because we know they're like probably tapped our friends' phones, and our family and all that stuff. Like, right. I haven't so you like, about... can't talk to anybody. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, my mom is worried sick. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> right now, we have everything on full blast with social media, and I'm hoping we get a real nice lead. The slave bots have been active, and we've already hit 300,000 people. Thanks so much for yeah, helping for us everything. out. Even if they're smart enough to be avoiding devices and social media, all the people around them aren't. Go back upstairs and let them sleep. Yeah. This is it for the night, you think? I don't see why not. It's only a matter of time before somebody gives them up for a reward. Let's keep pressing and keep pressing and keep pressing. Roger that, sir. Oh, oh. It says, notice, have you seen me? Monetary rewards are offered for any tips that result in the capture of one or both fugitives. Please contact us if you spot this individual or you have information that might help us find him. You may be entitled to a reward. We could call the people now, because then we get them caught for real. Like, how much money do you think you're going to get from them? We'll get a big prize. It's tempting. I want to turn their asses in. We don't know them. In the southeastern United States, six pairs of fugitives are still on the run. Please contact us if you spot this individual. You may be entitled to a reward. I want to turn their asses in. Why would you do that? Why would you be the ones to turn them in? Because it says there's a monetary award. We're supposed to be the good people that they trusted. Right. Do you care more about money or your soul? Cool, fine, we won't do it. OK. Best friends, two and Centra Tran, traveled south to Florida. There it is. Do you see him? Oh, there he is. There he is. Oh, my god. Thank you so much. It's so good. We have I to know. go. We can't hang out. Let's, like, move. OK, OK. I'm back to my place. You live in? Okay. It's closed. We're going to cross the street right here. Okay. We're not going to walk along these. Okay. So you know where the cameras are? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Perfect. I get shot 
Hey, Zyra, you're gonna wanna see this. Remember I put out sort of a general call for authorized dealers of prepaid phones near the central train launch location point? Right. Well, this just came back. You're gonna recognize a certain floppy hat. Hey, that's definitely yeah. her hat. That's definitely her. That's a Walgreens. At 1742, I'm gonna request the receipt from the Walgreens. Did you ask for all the other CCTV in the store? Hold on. So look at this. We got another camera shot from inside the store. Our fugitive walked into a store looking for a burner phone, and we were able to get the date and timestamp, so then we were able to actually request a receipt. The receipt just came back from the Walgreens. Centra bought burner phones, prepaid phones. So this is probably on them. Let's just hope it's powered on and running. I'm going to put in a critical request to track it. That receipt gives us a phone number for the phone they purchased. All of those things, again, give us clues to lead us exactly to them. Hey, Zyra, this phone has just been in contact with Robert Futrell's phone. He lives in St. Augustine, Florida, Two's friend, a fellow photographer, also in her circle of trust for that reason. If you're on the run, you need to go dark. And I really mean go dark. If it's powered by electricity, don't go near it. You need to go back to the Stone Age. So let me, Florida, right? let me see where it is. You're right, here we go to Florida. Yeah. So we could realistically move Delta in that direction? Absolutely. OK, thanks, I appreciate it. Here's what we have on the trans. A call was placed into Robert Fertrell's phone. OK. What we want you guys to do is push toward Robert Fertrell's home address. We thought maybe they were heading in that direction. Awesome. OK, perfect. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. All right, thank you. We are in a house uh, off the road not in our hammocks or rolling around in dirt. He cooked us a really good meal, eggs and chicken, and had a cup of coffee. I'm feeling good about having safety, a little bit of normalcy, taking a shower, but I know the minute that we are done with that, it's gonna be game time because we're gonna need to figure out how to fall off the grid again. So long as we move quickly, then the hunters won't be able to catch up to us. We never know where they are and how close they are behind us. So it's just always good to move quickly when we are gonna like, go from somewhere. Right here in the area. Are you ready? Interview Robert for trail, that's obvious. But if they just happen to be there, see if we can get somebody in the front. Can you get to the backyard? I could actually see the back entrance. So if she flushes anyone out, I can get them. Hi, Robert? Hi, I'm Rob. Rob. My name is Jackie Boehner. I'm an investigator. I want to talk to you about two and center trans. We have reason to believe that you might be assisting them. Southern charmers Will and Miles have convinced their host, Anna, to help them find a ride out of town. How do I end up here, of all places? Just a ride, one place to the other. Now we're here. Meanwhile, back at command center, a call comes in to the tip line from Will and Miles' wanted posters. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. OK, and you said you were calling for a, a tip? Yes. OK, and who's this in regards to? Um, Will and Miles. What is your full name? Mary Scott Valentine. Okay, Mary, what do you know about Will and Miles? They are currently at Edisto Island, South Carolina. Okay, and how do you know this? Um, they are staying at my sister's house. Your sister's name? Um, Anna. Does your sister know that you're calling in today? <laughs> no. When was the last time that you saw Will and Miles at the location? I didn't see them, but I know they were there like five to 10 minutes ago. OK. Can I have your sister's phone number? Yeah, um, it's 803. Uh-huh. Can you put a track on the sister's cell for geolocation and live monitoring, like ASAP? Thank you so much for giving okay. us a call, Mary. All right. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Where would you recommend, like, trying to go? Like, where would someone be down to take us? I feel like we're trapped, kind of. No, she didn't. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Our other sister turned you guys in. What? Are you serious? Yeah. She turned you guys in. They know we're in Edisto? Yeah, I think so. What the hell? We need to get out of Edisto. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Guys, can you bring me up to speed on where we are? We had an informant ring in on the hotline. She knew where Will and Miles were five to ten minutes ago at the time of the call. That was at her sister's house. Her sister is called Anna. So the assessment is they've left the address. 
taken Will and Miles with them. We've got Anna's cell phone on monitoring. That handset moved. And I got cell towers for those locations. Let me throw those bad boys on a map. My primary role with this task force has been tracking phones. Those phones communicate with towers, and every time that phone moves, it's toggling from tower to tower. That's geospatial intelligence showing us where that phone is moving. That's a map. If I can find a phone, I can find a body. There's something on our Facebook? Yeah, yeah. your profile pictures are put on show them. Yeah, can we see? Yeah. No way. This is insane. Dude, I thought we were so off the grid. Well, I feel bad because, like, you wouldn't have been caught if it wasn't for my sister. Did she get money or something? It said you're going to get a monetary reward. <sighs> you're not driving us to them, are you? No. The fugitives flee southbound along the South Carolina coast. Thank y'all very much. Anna drops them off in the town of Beaufort, unaware that her phone has been acting as a tracking device, setting a road map for the hunters. We agree that we need to just work on finding a ride out here, right? Or a place to stay. Anna's phone pinged pretty much in the center here, actually, of uh, Beaufort. So the assessment is it was a potential drop-off area for Will and Miles. We should go there. OK. SWAT team leader Nick Klementovich and police officer Samuel Phillips are first to be dispatched to the potential drop-off area. Try and do some investigation around that cell tower hit. There might be someone that's seen the drop-off. OK, excellent, Ben. Thank you. With Team Echo nearby, Army veterans Ali Paganetti and Jonathan Gomez join in the pursuit. You guys clear to help us? Yeah, yeah we're on our way. We're going to sleep in Beaufort tonight, but we don't have like a place to stay like a, yet. We're looking for like a garage, a back oh porch, gosh. or anything. No, our we're floor? actually staying. We're staying with some friends too. Oh, you are? Yeah. You don't think they'd be okay with it, do you? No. No? Okay. <laughs> no worries. Well, good to meet y'all. You got fun? Yes, ma'am. We have a good feeling that they're still in that area. If y'all can maybe canvas the area, walk a little bit, show some posters, you might as well just start working and see if we can get any intel. All right. I'm going to go to every restaurant, talk to people, drop some of these. If you see them, call us immediately. Cool. Awesome. All right. I've been here before a few times. This area hey, right in here. A lot going on right on this little lake right here. Great partying oh, area. What's up? They got a bar actually in the water. Oh, wow. Sailboats. So. I'm hoping they haven't made it off of this island area. They're almost cornered in geographically. There is a bridge that's head south to Savannah. We put requests in there. All right, let's go this way and out that way. Yeah, there's restaurants down here, there's a marina, there's places down Main Street we can go. Do they look familiar to you? Yeah. Not whatsoever. No. Would y'all have to have like a garage or backyard we could camp out in? I'm on a boat. Get extra room on the boat. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be like, like one night. out tomorrow? No. Yeah. Are you serious? Okay. I know. Yeah. Well, come on, we'll take the door. Oh, oh, thank y'all so much. <laughs> What's happening? All right, Lenny. We canvas, pass out some flyers. So far, uh, negative. Well, we've got the drone. We can get that up, see if we can get some video out of there on the block and whatnot. Um, the only last thing I was thinking, it'd be useful to check the boats. Like that being on an island that connects to other islands, that might be a good way to try to get off. I, I would look at those piers, those boats. I mean, surveil that spot, see what walks off those boats. OK. Sounds, Sounds good. good. At this moment, we're as absolutely safe as we could be. Yeah. I think we were way off the grid until that debacle. We were. Luckily, we were able to connect with Steve and his wife. I mean, I can't think of uh, a better place to, to be camped out and to be uh, hidden than on a boat. You guys thinking of going down the coast? Is uh, the I think so. Best way? I think that's the play. Well, I'll tell you what. You guys make yourselves at home. We're getting drones overhead right now. They just launched. We're going to get eyes on, and uh, we'll pass more information as we go. Hey. All right, we're just going to nonchalantly walk down there because we suspect they're around here. So I'm your longtime friend. We're just going for a boat ride. No problem. Is that them in the front? On the end? Yeah, I like those two. It's two guys, right? Yeah. Uh, negative on the uh, ID. Negative. Nah, All right. All right, copy that. Repositioning into the marina. Hey, Ali, go ahead and pass all intel. Is that them on top of the boat? Just look at it. Look how big this boat is. Hard to see. Is that the drone that I'm seeing? The 
It's them, sir. Is that them on top of the boat? I think he just got busted. We can get out as fast as possible. We have a positive ID on both fugitives. We have Ali picking up hotel team on the boat. Let's go. How far out is this boat? This boat is about in the middle of the harbor. Allie's in position. They're ready for a chase. If it comes down to that. Allie, looks like yep. we have eyes on a white trim boat. It has a white top with a black hole. You do not let this boat leave our sight. OK, we're on it. We got to get the hell out of here. Let's do it. I'm about to freak out. Personnel fugitives are moving to the back of the boat. Looks like they're going to utilize the dinghy. It's a white dinghy to the rear of the boat. You're out of here. Thank you. Thank you for everything. There they go, there they go, there they go. Yep, there they go. Where's Allie? I think this is her, and the thing is right up in this area right here. There they are, right there. Double time, guys, let's go. She's gonna catch him, she's gonna catch him. Your time on the run is over. Nice! I can't believe that that just happened. Watch your head. There was nobody around us. We felt like we were totally off the grid. To have all of the energy, all the effort we put in, basically ruined by somebody we've never met, it's heartbreaking. Cupid's Revenge. Cupid's Revenge led to a great tip on both Miles and Will. It was perfect for what we needed it to do to get them. Two guys that were prolific users of these apps themselves. Even though they avoided cyber, the irony is we got people not using cyber with cyber. Great job. Very proud of you guys. We got more fugitives to go get. Stay tuned for scenes from the next episode of Hunted. Next Wednesday on Hunted, a new couple's escape plans are threatened by a massive tropical storm. It's an absolute monsoon down here. Yeah. David and Emily find a new hiding place. We would have never found this. But the hunters may be on their trail. Got a hit in the middle of the woods. This is the lead we've been waiting for. 